Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome to our Friday edition of uh, Lent uh, devotions that we've been doing. If you haven't been on this journey with us, we are taking 20 days and we are declaring that this for us is 20 days of victory. Um, we, we know that God uh, wants to do something incredible in all of our lives. And we don't look at Easter as simply a uh, an event that happened, uh, you know, we don't look at it. Obviously, it is the resurrection of Jesus. But, you know, even when Jesus rose from the uh, dead, the Bible says that graves all over Jerusalem begin to burst open. Uh, and it's such a significant time of our faith. So we believe that it's not just Easter um, or resurrection season. It is a time or a season of miracles. So what we have done as a church over the last several years is we take the Lenten season and we begin to pray and fast as a church and we begin to ask God, Lord, what is it that you would want to do in my life and in my heart and in my family during this season? And I'll tell you, year after year, it has been powerful. Lives changed and transformed. Addictions fallen off people. Uh, breakthroughs of what people have been believing God for have happened. And, and come to pass. And, you know, I always say it's not that we're on a hunger strike against God that, hey, we're not going to eat or uh, do this until you uh, perform a miracle for us. We understand that it's always us repositioning ourselves to be in alignment to receive from God. So he's never holding out on us. It's always uh, us that's saying, hey, we, we need to get something right in, in me. I, I need to have an alignment maybe with my attitude or uh with how I'm, I'm looking at the situation. And so when you take some time out and you say, all right, God, in this season, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna pray and I'm gonna ask uh, you to realign in me what needs to be realigned. He is always, always, always faithful to do that. So uh, this is our Friday edition of our devotion. So um, I, everyone that has happened that we have had so far has been phenomenal. And uh, I know you've been blessed by them. So, um, We've been going through a book study on Wednesday nights uh, by Pastor Rod Parsley called Revival If. And I just want to tell you, this has and is revolutionizing my life. Um, I believe that the lives of the people who have, have been going through this study with us. Uh, somebody had said, you know, after our first study, they, they called me the next day and said, listen, I couldn't sleep all night because the spirit of God was stirring in my Heart. Somebody else said, listen, I, I, they showed up to church at 7 a.m. to be on their face before God. Uh, this past Wednesday, somebody just said, listen, I, I, I began to read the preface of the book, Revival If, and the Holy Spirit fell in, in their living room or their kitchen, wherever they were, and uh, they were, were just overwhelmed by the Spirit of God in those moments. So we've been going through that uh, Wednesday nights, and some of the facts or statistics that came out this past Wednesday were just overwhelming. And it really talks about the need of why we need revival in the church. And one of the things that, man, has just been sticking in my, my, my head that I just can't move on is that it takes the church, the church at large, uh, 10 years and $100,000 to win one person. And, and again, you know, we, we say that number and um, you know, there are a lot of great churches out there, churches, you know, like ours at, at Hope City and all around the world who are seeing people come to Christ every single Sunday. And we do. But if you take that number divided amongst the churches in America um, and, you know, what we're spending on outreach and, and budgets and all of that. And man, it's just a staggering number to me. Um, and it really just, you know, breaks my heart and, and, and how we desperately need revival. So I want to talk along those lines a little bit uh, this morning as we do our devotional together. And I want to read from Acts chapter 2, verse 17, and a very familiar portion of scripture, but here's what it says. I will pour my spirit on all people, your sons and your daughters, they will prophesy. Your young men will see, uh, see visions and your old men will dream dreams. And Joel 2.25, so I will restore to you that the swarming locusts have eaten. Now, this is a promise from God to his people that in, in, in that day, it's talking about the, the end of the days and the days of the spirit, he will pour out his spirit on all people. That's us. 
what the enemy stole, he will restore. Some great promises. But now I want to read you what Matthew 7, verse 7 says. It says, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receives. The one who seeks, finds. And the one who knocks, the door will be open. Again, as I just begin to read that, I, I'm just again overwhelmed with the provision of God in that he's just saying, listen, revival can happen in our lives, in our personal lives, in our daily walks, in our journey, in our homes, in our family, in our children. And it's not contingent on trying to position yourself to twist God's arm to do something. He says, listen, revival will happen if you just knock. If you just ask, resurrection can come to your home and to your life in this 20 days of victory if you just ask. So I want to just submit to you today, what are you asking God for? You know, sometimes we, we enter into a season like this and we just say, well, you know, whatever God wants to do, he'll do. And yeah, he will. But come on, there's, there's power there. He said, ask and the door it will be given to you. Knock and the door will be open. There's, there's a condition on our part to verbalize and speak what it is we're believing God to do. So I don't know if during these 20 days of victory, maybe you're believing for the salvation of a loved one. And maybe, you know, you need to write their name down. Maybe you're believing for breakthrough in finances or breakthrough in your employment or, you know, breakthrough in your marriage. So you need to write that stuff down, put it on paper and daily just say, Father, I thank you for these 20 days. I will see victory in this area of my life. Victory is coming. Victory is assured. It's happening. It's mine. You provided it on the cross. You paid for it when you went to the tomb. You sealed it when you rose from the grave. It belongs to me. So Father, pour out your blessings. Come on. Sometimes we need to start praying that way. I call that praying the, the decrees of God, praying the promises of God over your life. So don't just, you know, go into this season and say, well, you know, what happens is what happened. No, get aggressive with it. The Bible says the kingdom of God suffers violence and the violent take it by force. Take what? Take the kingdom of God. What is the kingdom of God? Love, joy, peace. Come on, all the fruits of the spirit, the gifts of the spirit. That's the kingdom of God. And we take that by force. And I'm not saying we take it by force against uh, man or other people, but we take it by force in the spirit. The way we do that is by declaring the word of the Lord over our lives and over our situations and over our families and uh, over our bodies, over our mental health, our spiritual health, our physical health. We declare the, the word of the Lord. We declare the promises of God. So I, I want to submit that to you today in this short devotion that we have together is I just want to challenge you, even right now, don't put it off because if you're like me, what happens is oh, I'll do that later on and then I don't do it later on. Sometimes you got to respond when an anointing is flowing and it hits your life. So I just want to encourage you today to make it plain. The Bible says, write the vision, make it plain, put it on paper, you know, write it down, let, let, make it tangible. What is it that you believe in God for? You know, sometimes I think that we don't, you know, believe God for enough. You know, and I know, you know, America, you know, we can be so materialistic and, and uh, you know, we can sometimes in our flesh lean over to that side. And that's not necessarily what I'm talking about. But what I'm saying is I think God wants to do, I think we, we carry, there's that old hymn of the church that said, that talks about what a friend we have in Jesus and oh, what peace we often forfeit all because we didn't take it to God in prayer. Sometimes I think we carry so much in our lives. We carry so many burdens. We, you know, walk with such anxiety. We walk with such fear. We walk with such intimidation. We, we live always waiting for the next shoe to drop or the next bad report. We just settle that, you know, anger's a part of my DNA and I'm always going to be angry and, you know, addiction runs in my family. So that's how, you know, I'm going to be addicted and my kids are going to be addicted. It's just, you know, it's in, it's in our DNA. And we say these things and, and sometimes I think we walk with all of these things because we simply don't ask God. Come on, he didn't go to the cross. He didn't bleed and die. He didn't take that crown of thorns upon his head. He didn't have that blood. You know, I began to think yesterday as I was uh, starting to prepare for our Good Friday service here at Hope City, I, I begin to think about, you know, the, the, the physical and tangible body of Jesus. And as he walked on the earth, uh, for those, those 33 years 
and you know that literally the blood that was pumping through his veins the value of that blood like it was it is the most precious resource that has ever hit this planet if you know anything about bible history you know that according to the law of god that when mankind would sin blood had to be spilt payment had to be made in old testament they could temporarily cover man's sin by uh, bringing a sacrifice of an animal to the, the temple and it would cover man's sin, but it still wouldn't give mankind direct access to God. It didn't secure their eternity in heaven because of that, that blood was temporary. It, it was a temporary covering. When I begin to just even picture Jesus and almost like just like the that bloodstream pumping through his body and the incredible Asp gold and just thinking of the enemy just staring him down, doing anything that he could do to try to get Jesus to fail and to fall. Because if Jesus made one mistake, if he sinned one time, that blood would be spoiled and, and, and have no effect when it was spilled. But you know the story of Jesus. He lived a pure and spotless life so that when that blood came flowing down on Calvary's cross, it was good enough. It was more than enough to pay not just for my sins and your sins, but to cover the sins of all who would call upon the name of the Lord. And when I begin to think about that, I think, you know, that blood was so precious, so costly, that it, the Bible says it had the ability to save our souls. To make us who were dust and dirt and sinful and dirty and wretched. It had the ability to make us joint heirs, the Bible says, with Christ Jesus. Joint heirs, a receiver of the covenant, a receiver of the blessing of God, a receiver of all of his promises. So when I begin to think about that, I begin to think, man, what do we live with and walk around with and carry? Because we just think that's the way it's supposed to be. When we do that, we are limiting the, the power of the blood of Jesus. And again, I'm not saying this that, you know, we can say, well, you know, I'm going to drive a Rolls, Rolls Royce and, you know, have a boat and have 20 mansions. That's, that's not the purpose of the gospel. God wants you blessed. Yeah, because what father, what parent would want their children blessed? And, and, you know, David said, I've been young and I've been old. I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging for bread. But what, what I want to really just dive into and submit to you today is that what mental attacks, what, you know, personality, I'll, I'll just say personality defects in, in, in the aspect of, you know, anger or bitterness or resentment or strife or, you know, have you just grown accustomed to, have I grown accustomed to where it's just, well, that's, that's who I am. The blood of Jesus was costly enough. It was more than enough to cover that, uh, that problem, that infirmity. We don't have to live with what Christ died to pay for and to cover. So I want to submit that to you today as we close this time together is make it plain, write it down, make it tangible. I know we're, you know, five, six days into this thing already, but, you know, just, I just encourage you today. If you're struggling with anger, if you're struggling with anxiety, if you're, uh, you know, have a, a, a sin that just so easily uh, throws you off course constantly, write that down. And as we go through these 20 days of victory, we, we recognize and we realize that the blood of Jesus was enough even for that. So we declare victory. We speak the word of God over our situations in this season. And we declare that he's enough. It's enough. I'm going to read that verse of scripture one more time, just in case you missed it in the beginning. Matthew 7, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receives, and the one who seeks, finds. To the one who knocks, the door will be open. Again, I've, I've taught you before that the will of God isn't guaranteed. Yes, he's sovereign, but the, the promises of God always are, are attached to conditions. Just even look at that again. He didn't say, it'll be given to you. You will find it. The door's going to be open. You're going to receive it. No, no, no. He didn't just blanket statement that, hey, everyone's getting everything. What he said is for those who ask, those who ask, there, there's the condition. I got to ask. I got to open my mouth. I got to put my faith on it. I got to speak it. I have to open my mouth. If those who ask, it will be given. Those who seek will find it. 
Come on, there's never been a person who has sought for more of God or more of his blessing or more of his presence or more of his promise in their lives who God has looked at and said, no, thank you. Come on, he, he's never done that. But those who seek, they will find. And the door will be open, not to just anybody walking by, but the door will be open to those who knock. I don't know about you, but I've got some knocking to do. I've got to get in, in, in heaven's door and start knocking on some things and saying, Lord, I know you've died to, to, to do more in my life than I'm seeing right now. So I wanna pray for you. Father, I just thank you for every person right now who's watching this live or watching this on replay. And Father, I just ask that you would just reveal to us those things that uh, you know we've just grown accustomed to, that we've just grown in, in uh, you know, that, that's just who we are, that's just how I am, that's how my family is, that's in my DNA. Father, when you died on the cross and we accepted that gift of salvation, it's no longer our DNA that runs through our body, but it's yours. So Father, things that have been in our, our past or things that have been generational, Lord, through you, through the cross, through your blood, through the Holy Spirit, we are more than overcomers in all of those things. There's no marriage you can't restore. There's no physical body that you can't uh, heal. There's no uh, mental attack or disease or uh, anxiety that you can't be present in and deliver us from. So Father, whatever those situations are that are knocking at our door, Father, we just respond and we ask and we speak and we seek and we knock on heaven's door. And we say, Father, give us more of you. Pour out your spirit on us as we receive it in Jesus' name. Hey, thanks for hanging out with me a little bit this morning. We will continue this Saturday, Sunday, the whole weekend going the whole way into uh, Good Friday. I want to remind you, don't, don't miss Good Friday service. It's going to be a powerful service. I'm already prepping for it. Uh, God's going to do something significant with, with, with that. So uh, I love you. Have a great day in the Lord, and I'll see you soon.